Hi, and welcome to Electronic Show this time. It's been a long time since, but, uh, you know, I had a lot of stuff to do, and I got a new internet line, fiber connection, and everything else. And with the old connection, it took, like, forever to upload any videos. It took, like, three to four hours just with one megabit line. I have a 100 megabit line up and down now. So making videos should be a little bit faster and a little bit more efficient. All right, enough about that. I'm going to show you something really interesting today. It's going to be Arduino microcontrollers. For you guys or girls who doesn't know what microcontrollers are, they are basically com mini co computers on a chip where you can program your all, all kinds of stuff. You can make your own robots, you can make your own alarm system, FM radios, uh, weather stations, you can make your coffee maker be, become intelligent and connected to the internet, you know, internet of things and stuff like that. You can do pretty much anything you want in the imagination that you have. The only problem up to, let's say, about 10 years ago is that it's been relatively complex and complicated to be using microcontrollers. And that means that most people who want to get started, they were basically left to extremely expensive development kits or having to learn everything from scratch, going to a long school, engineering school, and learning all about programming, embedded designs on electronics, microcontrollers, microprocessors, etc., etc., in order to do anything. The good thing is that something happened f quite a few years ago. Some guys came up with something called Arduino, and I'm going to show you that later. But just to begin with, just to give you an idea what what I had to go through to when I programmed microcontrollers in my time. We're talking many, many years ago, much more than 10 years ago. I had to use something like this, for instance. This was a EPROM burner, and there's all kinds of converters, as you can see, on it, like this, to make it work with all kinds of chips. Not only that, I had to have some kind of a specialized development kit like this. This is a cheap clone version I used of a really much more expensive set, also bought from China. And I don't have to use those things anymore, thanks to Arduino. And you're probably wondering, what is Arduino? What is that kind of stuff? Arduino, I've heard of that before, but I don't know what it is. Well, Arduino can be many things. It is basically a programming concept rather than a microcontroller or a computer or anything like that. It is a concept that means that it makes it very easy for you as a user to get started in programming. Let's say that you want to program something, you know, the coffee maker I was talking about. If you want that thing to be connected to the internet, all you need is an Arduino compatible uh, development board or a microprocessor that is supported by Arduino. The Arduino is just an ID. It's a setup, it's a sketch, where you can, and it's a simple setup where you can program all kinds of devices with simple C uh, programming, C++, I think it is. And most of the advanced stuff, like controlling the various devices, are hidden. They're called libraries. But the, most of the advanced um, back-end framework has been hidden for you, which means you don't have to think about all kinds of advanced stuff. If you want to, let's say, uh, um, here is something I made uh, with Arduino. If you wanted to make this little TFT screen work, for instance, uh, normally, you would need a lot of programming in order to get that thing up and running. But you don't have to do that with Arduino. It's already been done for you. You have to find the library and install it in Arduino. And all you have to do is to write something like uh, TFT, print, and whatever you want to print on the screen. And it prints it on the screen. That's how simple it is. You can put a real-time clock, like I've done here, on it with a backup battery so it runs without the power. Uh, there's a small moisture sensor here, humidity sensor. And here's the Arduino Nano I put on it, a small computer, only 16 megahertz, but it works just fine for what it's supposed to do. The big thing you see here is just a practical power supply I put on it in order to make it run off the computer. So it doesn't have to, uh, well, it doesn't need a computer to run. I also made something very simple, but I'm going to show you what an Arduino is first. You can you can find tons of videos on the internet of what Arduino does and what it doesn't, or what it doesn't do, etc., etc. I'm not going to show you all of those things. I'm not even going to show you how to program an Arduino because there's thousands of videos out there that shows you this. I'm just going to show you a few of those fun things you can make yourself without too much knowledge, without too much time. 
Just in a few hours time during a weekend, I decided to, to make a weather monitor because I've always been wanting to make my own. So I did. Uh, all that I did was I used this little thing here called an Arduino. Uh, this is the nano version of Arduino. This is actually a cheap Chinese clone. You can get these for $2 on eBay. I'm not kidding you. You can really get these for $2. You have to understand that the people behind the Arduino open source this. This means that everybody can copy this freely without being illegal. You're not, not doing anything illegal by copying the hardware of an Arduino. It's actually in the open. But please do me and you and everybody else who develops these things uh, a favor by donating to the Arduino team. If you are downloading Sketch, which you need in order to program these units, please make a small donation or a big donation if you can afford that uh, to the Arduino team. Just so uh, you can buy a consciousness uh, a little bit away when you're buying Chinese clones next time. All right. Um, you can also get bigger Arduinos. Uh, this is the Arduino Uno. This is a Uno clone. A Uno R3, I think. It is basically just a clone. and um, I think the Nano is better and it's more practical because you can fit it on a breadboard. As I showed you before, you can easily fit it on a breadboard. Here's one with an OLED display I have right now. Um, it took me only like 20 minutes to connect, connect this OLED display that I bought on uh, eBay. OLED displays are a little bit expensive still, but uh, they're worth it because they're super crisp and clear. You can probably see it from all angles, you know, because it's small light emitting diodes uh, on a small film screen or something like that. So I, I'm not really sure how that technology actually works, but that's how I think it works anyway. So that's all I basically did. I just downloaded the sketch demo that tests the screen and selected my screen type. And connect it to an IIE2C interface. And it, uh, it runs just fine. I'm going to be having fun with that. If you don't want to pay so much money for displays. You can always use a cheap Nokia display. This usually sells for less than $2. And I've connected this one up for you. So you can see how it works. Oh, uh, not with this one. Hang on. I'm going to find if I have a USB cable here. Yeah, I do. So let's plug it in and see how it works. Yeah. There he goes. You can really see it there. Runs a little bit upside down, but there you see it's running the test really fast. And it works just like a charm. All right. Imagine what you can do with that stuff. You can make test instruments. You can make all kinds of measurements instruments. You can make some toys with it, guessing games, just like you can with a cell phone. In fact, you can actually build a cell phone from scratch with Arduinos. And I'm not kidding about that. There's actually videos about that if you YouTube this. Or Google it, and you'll find plenty of examples. Um, but back to the weather station I made in a few hours and uh, during a weekend. Uh, this is essentially just the Arduino uh, Uno, which I have inside of no, the Arduino Nano, which I have inside of this. You can actually see the USB plug here, which means I've just attached a a uh, switch here to it, which switches between the external power and in internal power. Which means when I plug this one to a USB charger, it will light up and show the display and the weather station. And I can run it at my night table anytime I want to. In fact, I do every single night. This one is next to me when I wake up in the morning. I'll show you when I turn this one off. You can see it resets the screen. It's very clear and crisp. And you can see it has humidity, temperature, and barometric pressure, as you can see here. That's a nifty little device. It took me only two hours to build half hour to set up the code because I basically just took the code of the internet and had to customize it to a somewhat special display I have here because this is not a normal display it took, it took me a while to figure out how to use this display this isn't something you can buy off the internet I've never seen this before I just got a whole bag of them like 60 or 70 d displays it was actually meant for some customized measurement instrument or something the test instrument uh, or something but I bought this cheap in Denmark back in, back in the days and I finally got to use that. That's one of the nice things with Arduino. You can actually plug it up and hook it up to anything you want to. You don't have to have anything that's already made or anything like that. You can actually just hook it up to anything you want. And in fact, I did. I had some old copier displays. You know, you those big old copy machines you can find at schools. Uh, sometimes they are out of service and they're just tossing them away. And you can rip out the display and actually reuse it. 
and I did that. I couldn't find this particular display on the Google or anything like that, but I found there was a compatible chip called the Toshiba, uh, I think it's the 6936 or something like that, I'm not really sure. Let's see, it says on the back side here, I think. It's the Toshiba... I'm getting older and need glasses and I said 69T6963C. Right. And that was enough information for me to find the right library so I can actually get this screen up and running. If I'm not mistaken, you should be able to see some text scrolling up on the screen here now. Uh, yep, there it is. And that's what I made. That's a quick example I made. And I connected to a, um, a mega. This is an uh, Arduino Mega clone. This clone is really cheap on eBay. I think I paid like $6 or $7 for like this. Normally, the or original Arduino Mega will cost you $50 or $60. But the clone works just fine. But they're, sometimes they're weak and sometimes they're stronger. Sometimes they use more expensive components and sometimes they're cheaper. I have a model that is actually $10 or $12 that came with a lot better components. So sometimes it's worth just buying some, you know, something more expensive because essentially you get what you pay for. If you're wondering what these two devices are, these are the predecessors to my Arduinos. This is a PIC programmer, not very good. And this is a um, 8751 programmer, also not very good. But the original one, I've used for many, many years, uh, which is an ETT, is really good. I've been using this one for years, but it doesn't come with Arduino, and as far as I know, I couldn't install Arduino on it. So, bye-bye to that old kit. All right. Uh, if you don't want to do a lot of hardware yourself, you can already buy so-called shields to Arduinos, which means if you need a breakout board, if, you don't, if you're not good with soldering or anything like that, uh, you can actually buy so-called breakout boards. They fit perfectly onto, for example, the this is the Arduino Mega, and this is the breakout shield for the uh, uh, Arduino Mega. And as you can see, it fits perfectly onto that. So then you can just use connectors instead. And speaking of connectors, it is, instead of just sitting in, so, there and soldering everything, you can use these connectors that I used. There it is. You can see it there as a clock with a temperature sensor and humidity sensor, and it works. It's a little color screen, as you can see. All right. These are really cheap, actually. The color screens there cost about two and a half dollars, so it's um, almost half the price of a OLED display. I would be using those. You could, of course, be using those traditional displays. I've used one here together with an. Um, I2C converter to um, to 16 pins output uh, uh, breakout, so you can actually use a traditional uh, Hitachi 44 series display on, for example, a small unit like the Dig DigiSpark. The DigiSpark uh, is also a um, a small Etini 85, I think, which you can run Arduino on. So if you, it doesn't have many I.O. ports, you can use one of those to get more I.O. ports. That's one way to do it. And just before we close up for, for today, this was just a quick Arduino review. I just, I'm just going to scroll through a, few, through a few of those things you can do with Arduino. You can also buy something called the ESP8266. Um, I recommend the 12E series. This is a Wi-Fi module. I've uh, tested one here and made my own power breakout board. I would recommend buying these commercial boards, only cost a dollar anyway, because uh, they can deliver up to one amp. This here is a little bit flimsy, but that's all that I had. But I made the ESP12 run just fine. And if you're asking what is that, well, it is actually a Wi-Fi module with a 32-bit 80 megahertz processor on it with 4 megabit flash RAM. And this is pretty cool because you can make all kinds of stuff in, and, then, and this costs only $2 and you can use it as an Arduino. The only problem is it has less I.O. ports, only one analog input, which is, by the way, just one volt maximum, and 
uh, it runs only on 3.3 volts. You may want to know that so you don't blow it up. Don't run 5 volts on it or don't use 5 volt logic on it because it will not work in the long run. But they are super cheap and I've got a whole bunch of them just to ensure myself that I got these in the future. I got all kinds of variations of them as well. These little modules are absolutely beautiful. You can run... This is like a, an Arduino on chip, if you like, uh, with I.O. ports and everything, just for a dollar. So uh, it's amazing what you can do. This is definitely for the Internet of Things, if you like. And I'm definitely going to make a lot of projects with those things. I've already been testing it, used it as a small server. It works just fine. It works just like a charm. But just one last word before we end. Um, you may want to get these. These are cheap. You can get these are like so-called DuPont cable. I don't know why they called it DuPont cables. Uh, I just call it breadboard wires. Uh, it's pretty similar to the wires I've been using before. But the problem with the old wires I got from China is they're very flimsical. They can't transfer much. Uh, they can't hold much. They can't. Uh, tr they don't hold much amperage. So that's that's the biggest problem. These ones are much hotter and much stronger and can probably run about one amp each. You're not going to need that when you're doing these experiments. But they're very handy and they're really cheap. You can get them with male and female connectors. And you can just break them out as, you, as many as you wish or just keep them as, as this if you want to. So these, I would definitely recommend get, getting those. So, um, oh yeah. And you can also run Arduino on those uh, Stellaris boards. There is actually a special Stellaris ID that somebody actually made that you can download to run an Arduino uh, on the Stellaris boards. So that was pretty much all I have time for right now. We're going to have fun with Arduino later. I'm going to show you specific projects and stuff like that. I've gotten a really fast internet now, so it doesn't take long to edit videos, new computer and everything else. So I'm going to have fun uploading lots of stuff to you guys. So stay tuned and uh, remember to press like and uh, subscribe down there if you want to watch more of this stuff. So until next time, see you around and have fun.